Hello, Mike. What's new? Got anything for the afternoon edition? No, nothing new. Fella King, his nemesis is out here. Now, Miss Logan, maybe you'd better drop back a little later. Cap Street's tied up on a very important case. That's <laughs> all right. An important case, huh? So the boys get a fast call. Pretty wreck the car, and when they get down there, it's just another family quarrel. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Bill. How many times have I told you not to bust I in my office? I can tell Laura and you, Ken Bill Street. I want some news. Of course, you know Miss Bobby Logan of the Herald. Little gal gets all the medals for digging up the bodies. Check with those fingerprints, will you? Right. Well, goodbye. A polite policeman. Nah. Oh, come on, Bill. Give me a story. You know I've got to have something for the afternoon edition. Everything is peaceful and quiet. I have nothing for the afternoon edition. Now, scram. Captain, the coroner phoned. They've just taken Dan Grady to the morgue. They fished him out of the bay about an hour ago. Murdered. Well, he's going to take this pretty hard, Mike. Sure. Him and Dan were just like brothers. Yes, I know. What makes you think they tried to hide his body, Doc? Well, in the first place, you know where it was found. Washed ashore down the bay. Lungs were collapsed. That means the body was under water pressure for some time. This was tied around the ankles. And there were deep bruises. Tied a weight on him and threw him overboard. That's right, Bill. After the bullets had done their work. Yeah. Did you get them over to ballistics? Mm-hmm. There's a close yet on. Take a look. Seaman's outfit. Andy, check these clothes and see if you can find out where he bought them. Thanks a lot, Doc. I'll check with you later about Dan. Hi, right, Bill. This is the whole department with a jolt, Bill. Hit me a little harder than the rest. Dan and I were together as kids. Took a training together. Pounded the same beat. Yes, I know. You say he was on a smuggling detail? Yes. That ought to lead us to something. Nothing unless he was following a hot trail. You know, Grady. He always preferred to work lone wolf on a case. Well, it's in my department now, Chief. It's homicide. Yes, and you have command of every resource of the department. I may need it, because I'm going to find out who killed Grady if it's the last thing I do. I know you will, Bill, and good luck. Thanks. Gee, Bill, I'm sorry. I wish I could help. Thanks, Bobby. It's funny, but somehow I can't realize it. Does his wife know? Molly? No, not yet. Poor kid. Say, you can help me at that if you want to. Of course. Anything. Go on out to Molly's and break it to her as easy as you can. She doesn't know me very well. You're the one to tell her. Oh, it's a woman's job. Okay, Bill. I came just as soon as I heard the news. Am I glad, Wong? I sure can use you. Unfortunately, I can't call you in on this case officially. I'm more or less doing it on my own. I'll do everything I can to help. Dan Grady was my friend, too. Thanks. You know what it means to me. Well, not too fast with your thanks. You know, the only reason I've been useful in the past was because in each case, the Orient was involved. Well, Dan Grady was assigned to the smuggling detail. And smuggling in San Francisco means the Orient. Let's have a look at his office. Good. Wife and kid. You say he was working on a smuggling detail? Yes, sort of a roving commission. The reason they gave it to Dan is because he was born and raised here in San Francisco. He knew every nook and cranny. But the 
seaman's clothes would indicate that he was working on something with the waterfront. Yeah, but what? Whoa, look here. What is that? Why, that's a rare piece of emerald jade, as fine a specimen as I've ever seen. Carved in the fashion of the Ming Dynasty. Why, the art of that carving has been lost for hundreds of years. This piece is worth two or three thousand dollars. Really? Dan was sure working on something hot. Probably that's why he was killed. Yes, I have seen many similar in the past three months from the captured provinces. Even so, from the ruined temple of Lao Ji, is it not so? Torn from their settings by alien hands. Even young China would not use such methods to win its wars. Where did you obtain this? It was in the drawer of the desk of the policeman who was killed. A policeman? A good man. Can you help me? A store called Belton's is on Market Street. There, a wise man could become more wise. How do you do? I'm Mr. Belden. Something I can do for you? I'd like an appraisal on this piece. Why, certainly. Mmm. A most unusual piece. The coloring is magnificent. But I'm afraid I can't appraise its real value. But I understood you specialized in oriental jewelry and art objects. No. Only imitations. Uh, we haven't a piece of jewelry in the house worth over $50. I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. So it would seem. Morning, Dan. I suggest you try Harrington's over on Kearney. They handle that class of merchandise. Thank you for your time. Not at all. I'm sorry I couldn't help you. Chief, that's the guy, all right. I'd know that face any place. Why, that mustache. Even the checker tie. Yeah, that's him. Checker tie, huh? Yeah. Where'd you see him? On the bus going uptown. What time was it? 12 o'clock noon. 12 o'clock noon, huh? You don't say. Yeah. At that time, he'd been lying dead for three hours in the morgue. Yeah? Yeah. Why, well, I'd have sworn on a stack of Bibles that was a guy. Sure, I know, Mr. Unifer. We all make mistakes sometimes, but thanks for coming in anyway. Oh, not at all, Inspector, not at all. Say, maybe it was the guy's double. Yeah. You know, they say every guy's got a double. Sure. Even me. Sure. Even you. Yeah, sure. Mike, get Bobby Logan on the phone. Yes, sir. Market 6400. Hello, Bobby. I was just trying to get you on the phone. Oh, are we going someplace? Yeah, you're going someplace. If you ever pull a bright idea like that again. Well, what's the matter with that? Somebody might be able to give you a lead. Somebody might be able to give me a lead. I've had every crank in San Francisco in here this afternoon. Yeah. Logan doesn't answer. Where do you think I ought to look for her? Try my office. Huh? Every one of them has seen Dan Grady in five different sections of the city at the same time. Well, but he But nothing. You see that guy that just went out of here? Yes. He was on the bus today at noon with Dan. Well, that's silly. Of course it's silly. But I've had to talk to those ghosts. That's what your idea's done. Wasted my whole afternoon. Yeah, Mike. A gentleman out here says he saw Detective Grady. What? Miss Logan will interview him. Well, did you hear it? Just faintly. Go on, he's your witness. Are 
Are you Mr. Lyon? Uh, yes. Oh, I'm Miss Logan of the Herald. I put that picture in the paper. Oh, how do you do? Uh, well, I saw the man last night. Are you sure? Certainly. We talked for quite a while in the bar at the Club Neptune. Good afternoon, Miss Logan. I came in answer to your advertisement. Oh, now look, Mr. Wong. <laughs> Now, give me the details and talk fast. Oh, hello, Wong. Did you get any information? I called on an old friend of mine in Chinatown who advised me to investigate Belden's store on Market Street. Belden's? You know, the jewelry shop. Oh, sure. I'll put a couple of men on it. Uh, no, I think I'd leave things the way they are for the time being. Bill Street, I've got him! Got who? This man did see Dan Grady. <laughs> now, look, Bobby, we've been all through that. But this man is positive. All right, if he's so positive, what was he wearing when you saw him? Well, uh, sort of like a sailor, you know, a uh, pea jacket, striped sweater. He had on dungarees, pea cap with black patent uh, leather visor. Where'd you see him? At the Club Neptune. He, he was sitting at the bar having a drink. What time was that? About 8.30, I guess. That fits in, doesn't it, Wong? Yes, it does. Well, of course it does. Silly idea, huh? If it hadn't been for that Quiet. piece of paper... You're quite sure this is the man? You're absolutely certain of your identification? Oh, yes. Uh, my drink happened to tip over and spilt on him. Uh, uh, and I apologized, and we got to talking. And then what happened? Well, we talked together for a couple of minutes about football and things like that. Uh, then I left and went home. You left him at this Club Neptune? Uh, yes, he was still sitting there when I left. Well, thank you very much. You've been a great help. Is there... Uh, any reward connected with this? Well, you see, uh, Miss Logan takes care of that. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Lyons. I'm afraid there's no reward, but... Well, I'd be very glad to mention your name in my next story of the t case. Uh, did you say your first name was Homer? Uh, yes, Homer. L-Y-O-N-S. Thank you. Too bad you haven't got a picture. Oh, I have. I, I brought one along just in case. Oh. Thank you very much, Mr. Lyons. Thank you. Good day. Well, Bell Street, do I get an apology or don't I? Sure, I'm gonna get the mayor to give you a key to the city. Hmm, terrific. The police thank the Herald for giving them their only clue. How's that, Mr. Wong? Not nearly strong enough. You've earned our undying gratitude. Well, I hope the information is some use to you. I'll see you later. Not me, Flatfoot. Get one of the nurses out of the receiving hospital. They don't mind a pain in the neck. Hey, you think that's a bad idea? Well, now, Street, just what do you know about the Club Neptune? Oh, not much, Wong. We better have dinner together. I'll take you down there later. I want to talk to this Harry Lockett. Harry Lockett? Yeah, he's the fellow that owns the Club Neptune. Hardway Harry, they call him. Hardway? Well, a gambler. Yeah, gambler, smuggler, crook, everything. upstairs. The usual crowd, not much play yet. Has Tanya come in yet tonight? No. I want to see her when she comes in. Okay. Well, anything? What? I'll bet you don't even know what day this is. Of course I do. It's Friday. That's why you insisted upon coming here for a fish dinner. Oh, no, it isn't. We came here because this is an anniversary.
Who is it? Daniel's here. But she's got young Bellin with her. Huh. She's starting that over again, eh? Bring her in here. Okay. Listen, Tanya. I've been lying awake nights planning our future together. I... I realize that I haven't much to offer you, but... I'll try awfully hard to make you happy. Oh, excuse me, Frank. I think I'd better go fix my makeup. Surely. What do you want? I thought I told you to keep away from young Belden. And I told you that my personal affairs are none of your business. What are you trying to do? Get the old man on our neck? Keep away from that boy or I'll... Or what? I guess if I'm good enough to help handle his smuggled junk, to run the risks that he cashes in on, I'm fit company for his son. Well, what about a certain other gentleman? Frank Belden wants to marry me. So? <laughs> He's got it bad, eh? Wait until his old man hears that. If you open your mouth to make trouble for that boy... So blow me down. You have really fallen for it. Maybe. Or maybe it's just the novelty of finding someone who's decent and on the level. Come on, come on, have some sense. Get the boyfriend out of here and keep him out. We're not in any spot to invite trouble, girlie. developed a headache, Frank. Maybe it was a drink. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, maybe some fresh air will do you good. Shall we take a drive? Yes. Hello, everybody. Well, ain't it grand we can all be together? Tommy, give me my usual. You know, that good old devil. Well, I know you. You're Logan of the Hill. Don't you remember me? I'm the guy you wrote about in that automobile accident. You know, in those days, I was a drinking man. Aren't you going to have your dinner? What dinner? The one you ordered. I ordered a dinner? I'm sure you did. Well, skip it. And I know you can handle your drinks better if you have something to eat. I think you got something to eat. Don't go away. You know, I always forget to eat when I go out stepping. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, that's all right. You were just feeling hospitable. Hmm. That's easy to understand. The Club Neptune feels the same way, Miss Logan. Gee whiz, I'm famous. <laughs> Who would recognize that pretty face of yours if they read the hell? I'm Harry Lockett. I'm very glad to meet you. I've heard a lot about you and your Club Neptune. So it seems, judging from today's Herald. You don't sound pleased. I'm not. I don't like that publicity. You don't? No. How about a little chat in my office? Why not? I think I'll take a look around the back. All right, I'll see you inside. You see, Miss Logan, we, uh, we don't like newspaper people around here. Hmm. I see your point. You know, if you had this place soundproof, those poker chips up there wouldn't make such a racket. <laughs> Just a little friendly advice. <laughs> Thanks. And here's some for you. I wouldn't write any more stories about the Club Neptune if I were you. Are you trying to tell me what to put in the Herald? I'm trying to tell you what you shouldn't put in the Herald. <laughs> in fact, uh, I'd just as soon you stay out of here. I think you'd be safer. Sometimes some people get hurt. Yeah, 
Dan Grady got hurt, didn't he? Hey, you sure stick out your neck, don't you, little girl? Who is it? Captain Street. What are you doing here? Mr. Lockett was just making some suggestions as to the news policy of the Herald. All right, Bobby. Well, now look here, Bill. Come Street. on, come on. Hello, Hardway. Hello, Copper. Have a drink? No, thanks. What's on your mind, Street? I suppose you read about Dan Grady. Oh, yes, yes, that's too bad. I don't think I knew him. I thought everybody on the waterfront knew Grady. <laughs> he was on the smuggling detail. It's funny you didn't run into him. I resent that, Street. I resent what happened to Dan Grady. Quit stalling, Hardway. He was in this place last night at 8.30 at your bar. Well, maybe he was. So what a lot of other people. We had a big night last night. And nobody saw Dan Grady. None of my boys did, because as soon as I saw the papers, I asked all of them. You can talk to them yourself. Maybe I will. Cigarette? Over there. attention to me if I seem a little tough, Harry. Dan happened to be a pal of mine. His body washed up on the beach this morning. Been in the water for 12 hours. Kind of a tough way to go, isn't it? Well, Street, they say that drowning, it's an easy death. But Grady had two slugs in the back of his neck before he ever hit that water. That's not so easy, is it? Well, Street, if there is anything I can do for Open you... Open that I... door. Open that door. Well, hello, Street. How'd you get in there? The secret stairway in the haunted house. Secret stairway, my eye. Those stairs were there when we bought the place. But they still serve a very useful purpose. This is Hardway Harry Lockett, Mr. Wong. Oh, the Chinese copper. Precisely, Mr. Lockett. The Chinese copper. But to return to our secret stairway, I'm afraid we scared one of your callers away. Evidently, he didn't care to meet my friend, Captain Street. Seafood is our specialty, Mr. Wong. That was probably kept from the fishing barge. He saw I was busy and beat it. That very adequately describes his exit. He comes in that way because he doesn't like to go through the cafe. Close or slightly the... fishy, Mr. Very Lord. fishy. I get this hard way. If I find out that anything happened to Grady in this place, I'm going to tear it apart. If you ever do, I'll help you. Come on, Wong. Goodbye, Mr. Lockett. Goodbye, Mr. Wong. Oh, sorry. Didn't know you were busy. Uh, he's not. Because we're just leaving. 
I beg your pardon, but we've met before, haven't we, Miss, uh, Miss, um... Sir Robert Benane, but we haven't met. I'm so sorry. Oh, now I know what prompted my mistake. I saw you sitting outside in a car with young Mr. Belden. What was he doing here? We had dinner here. Do you mind? Excuse the boys from Sir Robert, but uh, it's their business to be curious. This is Mr. Wong, the famous detective. And this is Captain Street of the San Francisco police. Your head waiter says you found my compact. Yes, it's my desk. I'll get it for you. Drop in any time, boys. It'll be your turn to drop in on us the next time. You're a help. Why in blaze did you get rid of Belden when I told you to? Well, I did. He must have seen us outside in the parking lot. What they want? You read the papers, don't you? What do you think? I think that dead policemen are bad medicine. I don't like it, Harry. Relax. They haven't got a thing on us. So Grady was here last night. What does that prove? That the party's getting too rough for yours truly. So? <laughs> don't tell me Miss Sorova's getting jittery, huh? Sorova's getting out. Murder's something I don't want any part of. I'm through. Oh, no, you're not. When you're through, it will be because I tell you you're through. Are you threatening me? Maybe. Don't do it, Harry. I know too much. Things uh, happen to people who know too much. Yes. They end up in the bay like a certain policeman. Seafood gag of Hardways was a hot one. <laughs> and the young lady who lost her compact. More seafood, A Street, I'll say. Well, what's her name? I thought I told you to scram. You're always telling me to scram. Well, you're not going to ride in a police car. Okay, let me out and I'll put on my roller skates. Oh. <laughs> I tell you, I don't like the setup. I don't like any part of it. When a dead copper spells trouble, and if this girl starts to talk... Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. But this idea of mine is something entirely new in radio, Mr. Forbes. Nevertheless, I'm against continuing the program. But Forbes, Belden's has had a radio program for years, and it's been excellent advertising. Not excellent enough to keep you out of the receivership. I represent the creditors, and I cannot approve the expenditure. But, Mr. Forbes, I'm sure this new idea of mine will create a lot of interest. That means customers for Belden's. I can only judge by past performance, Mr. Griswold. Results have not warranted the expense. Uh, all here? Yes. Oh, but, Mr. Forbes, this is a novelty, a complete one-act play in which I enact all the roles, male and female. Oh. You see, Mr. Forbes, impersonation is my fort. I think persistence is your fort. Well, I tell you, this is the type of program that's bound to create comment. Why not give it a chance? Uh, uh, just glance through this, and you'll get the idea. After the commercial, the music fades out, and you hear footsteps and a knock. Now, uh, read from there on. Pretty melodramatic, isn't it? But that's the kind of stuff they like nowadays, Mr. Forbes. The highly dramatic programs are the most successful. Suppose we try it for a couple of weeks. It wouldn't cost a fortune, and it might get results. Well, all right, we'll try it. Uh, thanks, Mr. Forbes. I'm sure you won't be sorry. We go on from 10 to 10.15 tonight. I hope you're listening in. We will. Those bills are all right. I'll see you in the morning. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mr. Forbes. How are you feeling, Dad? Oh, as well as could be expected, considering the fact that I don't have anything to say about my own business. When are you going to take me in with you? Not for a while yet. But, Dad, I've got to go to work. I've got to make some money. Isn't your allowance enough? No. 
I'm going to get married. Who to? That Sarova woman? Miss Sarova, yes. How did you know? I haven't taken my eyes off you completely. You've been out with that adventuress every night for a month. I wouldn't talk like that if I were you, Dad. We're both liable to be sorry for it. Besides, it won't change my decision. Frank, I won't permit you to wreck your life, to throw away your entire future for the sake of that scheming on unscrupulous... That's enough! I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Dad, but there's nothing you can do about it. You'll never marry that woman. Do you understand? Never! Morning, Sophie. Everything chip shape? No sign of the police, if that's what you mean. Oh, why, Sophie, that's the farthest thing from my mind. Bring me the checks from last night, eh? Okay. been fooling around my desk? Me? Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't touch your stuff, boss. Something missing? Yeah, my gun. Gee, that ain't so good. When did you last see it, boss? I don't know. Yesterday, I guess. I want to talk to you. Say, what are you thinking of coming down here after what's happened? I told you I'd get the stuff to you as soon as it was safe for Cap to bring it in. That isn't why I'm here. I want to know what that Sarova woman is doing running around with my son. Well, I did my best. You know, after all, it's not such a bad idea, sort of a close corporation. Are you mad? My boy has no part in all this. I went into it because it was the only hope I had of saving my business, of meeting my obligations, but not to the extent of wrecking his life, and that's what this marriage would mean. That's your problem. Right now, I have more important things to do than nurse a lovesick Pop. If you value your neck, you'll do something about it. I'm warning you, Lockett. Before I see this happen to my son, I'll blast everything wide open. Including yourself? Including myself. Uh -huh. I see you. You like the idea of a few months on Alcatraz? I'll stop at nothing. This is Harry. I want to apologize the way I talked to you last night. Oh, you know, I couldn't mean it. We were both a little uh, jittery and unreasonable. <laughs> now listen, Tanya, I, uh, I want to see you. I have to talk over something with you. I think you'd be interested. All right. I'll be in all evening. Goodbye. Didn't keep you waiting, Fancy. Oh, that's all right, so don't mention it. He missed me. Oh, I'm glad of that. Who was it, sir? I haven't the least idea, but the shot came from there. Well, we'll find out who that is.
whoever it was, beat it out the back and left the door wide open. Whoever it was, he killed Mr. Belden. What? Who? Oh, glory be! Get straight. Yes, sir. This case has got a million angles. If this jade matches the stuff we found in Grady's office, Belton had a fortune hidden away. And I can't understand why he was in receivership. Well, perhaps he went into this kind of business to get out of receivership. What's that receiver's name? Maybe he can help us. A man named Forbes. You know where he lives? At the town apartments. We'll go up and see him. Clancy, call my office and have young Belton picked up. Tell him to hold him while I get there. Wait for the corner. Yes, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. We want to see Mr. Forbes, John T. Forbes. Who's calling? Captain Street of the police department. Ring 22, please. Captain Street of the police department to see Mr. Forbes. Yes, sir. Go right up, Captain Street. That's number 22. Captain Street? <laughs> what on earth can he want? I wonder if I've forgotten a speed ticket. Excuse me. Freddy, take my hand, will you? Okay, but it's 10 o'clock and I have to meet oh, Alfie. Probably won't be very long. Captain Street? That's right, and it's Mr. Wong. How do you do? How do you do? Come in here, gentlemen. Thank you. I'm afraid we interrupted your game, Mr. Ford. Oh, that's all right. Sit down, gentlemen. I've heard a great deal about you at one time or another, Mr. Wong. I'm certainly glad to meet you. Thank you. Well, now, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Might as well come to the point, Mr. Forbes. Frank Belden, Sr., the firm for which your receiver was found dead a half an hour ago in his store. What? Poor old Frank. I had no idea he felt so desperately about it. Of course, I knew his uh, financial affairs were in bad shape. It was not suicide, Mr. Forbes. He was murdered. Well, this certainly knocks me out. I've got to have a drink. How about you, gentlemen? Thank you, no. No, thanks. Murdered. Who, uh, <coughs> who found him? Uh, give me more of the details. Mr. Wong found the body. Wong? Were you in the store? I was making an investigation of Belden's stock. I found this piece of jade worth at least two or three thousand dollars. And there are several more pieces, too, just as valuable. Well, I thought they carried only cheap costume jewelry. Could he have been concealing any uh, valuable assets from me? That's exactly what we wanted to find out. I'd like to go down to the store and make a complete examination of their stock. Will that be all right? I think it's a good idea. Will you, will you have a cigar, gentlemen? Yes, thanks. No, thank you. One more thing I think you should know. That jade was smuggled. And one of our own men on the smuggling detail was murdered, running it down. And the trail seems to lead to Belden's store. Why, this is the worst thing I've ever heard. Excuse me. Hello? Yeah. Here's for you. Thanks. Straight speaking. What? I'll go right up. There's been a shooting on the floor above. Can we get out this way? Yes.
That's that Sarova girl. How do you like this? A murder right over my head. Yeah? Oh, you're the clerk. Yes, sir. I telephoned headquarters from downstairs. Thanks. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing, except what the switchboard operator told me. What'd she tell you? Well, I was sitting in the lobby when all of a sudden she started yelling, Mr. Sarova's being killed. <laughs> all right, all right. Take it easy. Sit down. What did you hear on the phone? Well, I was sitting there as usual when the buzzer sounded and it was a call from 32. What time was that? About 14 after 10. That's an odd time to remember, 10, 14. Well, I'm not sure, but it was 15 after 10 when I heard the shot. And they were arguing about a minute. Who was arguing? Mr. Rover and the man. Well, what were they arguing about? What'd they say? Well, he said, get away from that telephone. That's the last time you're going to pull this sort of stuff on me. And Mr. Rover yelled, don't shoot, don't shoot. But he did. It's quite possible, Street. The receiver's off the stand. Yeah. Do you recognize the man's voice? No, but he was awful mad. Anybody come through that lobby that might have come up here? No, sir. Did you pass anybody on the way up? I didn't see anybody. All right, that's all for now. Stick around downstairs. Oh, hello, Doc. Prince photographs the works. And I want you to get me that... Oh, little Bo Peep, huh? What are you made up for? That's all I need! Just be sure to get everything in this corner, will you please? Hello, Bellard. What are you doing here? I thought I told you to tail hard way. I was trailing him. I lost him in the traffic at 8 and Market around 9 o'clock. I've been looking for him ever since. That's wonderful. Get my office on the phone. Get me police headquarters. Hey. Remember the last guy we saw Sir Over with? Hardway Harry. And he ditched Ballard an hour ago. That's our man. Just a minute, hold it, Mike. Hello, Mike. Hardway ditched Ballard about an hour ago. Eighth and Market. Yeah, I want you to send out a couple of men of heaven. Hello. What? Hello, operator. Hardway Harry's been sitting operator. in my office for the last hour. Operator. operator. Get her off the phone! Come on, get off there. Put that Hello, Mike. I want you to hold hard way. I don't care how you hold him, hold him! Bill! Bill and May! Will you stop? Well, then the housekeeper... Will you quit picking on me? Mr. Wong, the housekeeper saw a man sneaking up the back stairs. Sit down. I'm sorry, uh, who are you? Uh, I'm the maid on this floor. Well, where were you in this... She was looking in the door. Will you be quiet? You say you saw a man coming up the back stairs. I finished by 10 o'clock. I was going down the back stairs when he came in. Who came in? The young man. What young man? Mr. Belden. Belden Jr. He was in the habit of using the back stairs? Sometimes. Then he had his own key. Yes, sir. That settles it. Ballard, pick up young Belden. Good idea. That's all for now, thanks. You know, Wong, Belden knew Sarova. Hardway knew her. They're all mixed up in this thing some way. I'm gonna have them all come in my office tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> uh. Sit down, Hardway. See who's out there, Jim. Well, how'd you do? Not bad. Have pretty good breakfast, you fellows, you know. Thanks for the cigarettes. Oh, we always take care of our guests. Who's out there? Knutchi and Cap Anderson. All right, Jim. A couple of friends of yours. Hmm. What were you doing here last night? Well, I caught one of your boys following me, and I figured he wanted to make sure where I was. So when he lost me about 9 o'clock, I decided I'd better check in. So you'd have an alibi because you knew Tanya Sarova was going to be killed last night. What? Yeah, murdered last night. Oh, coming in here wasn't such a bad idea, was it? What time did you get here? 9.29 on the dot. Oh, got it figured out the minute, huh? Yeah, you can check with the sergeant. I know, I know. So? Hello, Wong. 
Oh, Mr. Wong, the Chinese copper. Look here, Street, you haven't got a thing on me. I knew Sir Arthur, sure. She used to come to my place very often. But so do a lot of other people. Including young Belden. Yes, with Sir Arthur, yes. So what? How well did you know young Belden? Casually. How well did you know his father? Just an acquaintance. When was the last time you saw him? I saw him in my office yesterday. He came to pay his son's bar bill. And you had a little quarrel. Then you followed him down to his jewelry store and shot him. Old man Belden shot? Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah, it is too bad. He got it the same way Grady got it, in the back of the neck. What's your alibi for that? I was being trailed by one of your coppers by good luck. What? man named Forbes is out here. He said you sent for him. All right, send him in. Wait outside, Art. Good morning, Mr. Forbes. You want to see me, Captain? Yes. You know Mr. Wong. Oh, yes. How are you, Mr. Wong? Forbes. We were kind of interrupted last night, and I'd kind of like to find out what you know about young Belden. Well, I'm afraid I can't tell you very much. Most of my dealing has been with his father. Well, what sort of a kid is he? Well, he's always struck me as being a rather nice sort of a chap. Quiet, well brought up, and... So you don't think for a minute that he had anything to do with his father's murder? Maybe. I do know he's mixed up in Sorova's death. Oh, I can't believe that, Captain. Why, it isn't possible. I'm afraid you're wrong. There's Belden, Captain. Picked him up in a quick lunch joint, having coffee. All right, sit down. Have you met Mr. Wong? Perhaps you met him last night. Oh, I've never met Mr. Wong. How do you do? We've been looking for you all night. Where were you? I don't know why the police should be interested in my movements. What's this all about? What were you doing in Tanya Sarova's apartment last night? Oh, we know you were there. The maid saw you sneaking up the back way. If I were you, I'd tell the captain all he wants to know. Well, I don't know what this is all about, Frank, but uh, you're welcome to my legal advice if I can be of any assistance to you. Uh, for his father's sake, I feel that I ought to do everything I can to protect him. All right. But I still want to know what you were doing in Tanya Sorova's apartment last night at 10 o'clock. Were you there, Frank? Yes, I was there, but... But I didn't kill her. She... She was dead when I found her. Don't give me that! Well, you don't know what you're saying, Frank. I demand that this boy be advised of his constitutional rights. I'll take care of his constitutional rights. This is a murder investigation. Tanya Sorova was killed last night at 10.15. Just 15 minutes after this young man was seen going in her apartment. That's not true. It's not true, I tell you. She was dead when I found her. Are you sure of the time, Street? Your own switchboard operator heard the argument and the report. They phoned Street in your study, you remember? Yes, yes, that's right. All right, Belt, an alibi out of that. Come clean. Why'd you kill her? I didn't, I didn't, I tell you. I, I love Tanya. Why would I want to kill her? I'll tell you why. Because you were jealous. You thought she was double-crossing you, and you went up to her apartment, and you quarreled, and then you killed her. That's a lie. Every word of it's a lie. So you found your sweetheart murdered. And what did you do? You ran out and hid. Why didn't you call the police? I, I don't know. I, I was half crazy. I... Now, see here, Street, this boy is no condition for questioning. I'll say he isn't, because he doesn't know the answers. Uh, gentlemen, I suggest that we all calm down and allow young Mr. Belder to tell us what happened in his own way. All right, all right. I'm listening. Now, supposing we go back just a little way, shall we? When did you last see Tanya Sorova alive? When she promised to marry me, yesterday afternoon late. And where was that? In her apartment. I, uh, I was going to take her to dinner, see, and, but she said she didn't feel well, so, so I went out and got a bite, and then I drove around a little while. Yes, and then? Well, on the way home, I, I saw a light in the apartment, and I, well, I went up to tell her good night. Are you in the habit of using the back way? Yeah, I had a key. See, sometimes Tanya wasn't in, and I'd go in and wait for her. Yeah, but she was in last night. Did you use the key then? No. No, that's funny. I, I remember that the door was open. Hmm? What else do you remember? Yes, Bell didn't go on. Well, I... I went in and called her, but there was no answer, so I went in the living room and... on the floor I saw her over by the window. Near the telephone? I don't know. I... I didn't see anything but Tanya. 
Was there anything else in the room that was unusual, that attracted your attention? Anything at all? Yes, yeah, I remember the, the radio was on. Oh, don't kid me. The radio wasn't playing when I got there. If you didn't leave that apartment till before 10, 15, where'd you go? I don't know, I just, I, I, I drove around. I, I don't know where I went. I, I drove all night. Why, Captain? A fellow out here named Griswold says he's got to see you. Who's Griswold? What does he want? What does he do? What do you want to see him about? Well, I got to talk to him. I'm from radio station LMAB. He's from a radio station, LMAB. I don't know anybody from a radio station. Tell him to wait. And he says you got to wait. All right, come clean. You didn't leave that apartment till after 10, 15. After you killed her! Stop it, I tell you, stop it! Street, you're getting nowhere proud beating the boy this way. Maybe if you let me talk to him quietly somewhere. All right, all right, I'll talk to him quietly. Would you like to see your father? No. Why should I want to see him? He's probably glad she's dead. Why should he be glad? Doesn't he like her? No. Did you quarrel over with your father? Yeah. Yeah, we had a quarrel and I walked out on him. And then you walked back last night to his jewelry store and shot him, killed him. You, you mean my father's dead? <laughs> stop it, will you stop it? What are you trying to do to me? Somebody give me a glass of water. Oh, never mind the water. Oh, I protest. Get him a glass of water. Where is it? Outside. Something wrong, Captain? Yeah, give me that brandy. Hmm. Now, go and sit down. What do you want? Come on, what is this? Hey, what am I supposed to do? Spend the weekend here? He'll get to you. Mr. Hardway. The press. Yes, the press. What do you know today? Pardon me. What's the matter? Who is this? It's the fellow from the radio station, Griswold. Where'd this paper file come from? Say, that looks like mine. It's missing from the desk. All right. Who did it? This is a payoff right in my own office. Stay away from that phone. Start talking hard way. What, again? Sorry for the interruption, Mr. Wong, but that is a new program and I want to check on it. Not at all. It's all most interesting. Yes, but uh, full of headaches. Replacing Griswold is going to be one of them. I can quite imagine. His programs were popular, weren't they? Very. He was a talented young man. Wrote uh, most of the sketches and played all the parts in them. He played female roles as well? Oh, yes. In the sketch you want to see, the one he did last night, he played a very emotional feminine role. Here's the manuscript for it. Thank you. Now, this program went on the air sharply at 10 o'clock? Oh, yes. Radio works on split seconds. Every program is timed exactly. And it ran for how long? Uh, 15 minutes in all. The sketch went on at 10, one and a half and finished at 10, 14. The balance of the program time was taken up with uh, commercials as advertising. Uh, would it disturb you if I turned on this program? Not at all. I've just finished. Uh, I'd like to take this with me. Oh, it would be all right. Thank you very much. Andrew, you Goodbye. Goodbye. Air, presenting for your entertainment the first mystery thriller in their new series of programs. <laughs> How do you do, sir? Can I help you? Yes. Is this the new remote control radio? Why, yes, and a very fine instrument, too. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to give me a demonstration. I'd be glad to. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now, uh, this is the remote control box. Hmm. Looks like the dial of an automatic telephone. And works very much on the same principle. You see, it's not attached in any way to the demonstration radio. However, being in any part of the house and desiring to change the program, we simply switch the dials and the radio automatically switches. I'll show you. Oh, 
California, fair Tuesday and Wednesday, moderate temperature, light to moderate northerly wind off coast. At just what California, distance would that still be effective? Cloudy, Guaranteed up to 200 feet. Tuesday and Wednesday, range extreme northwest. And you can shut the radio off in the Oklahoma same way. Valley. Oh yes, wind just press down on this right here. Coming suddenly and. In What, again? Yeah. Didn't take long for that lawyer to get you and the boys out, did it, Hardway? Why should it? Say, listen, you can't hang that murder rap on any of us. Somebody killed Griswold, and three of you were there when it happened. Yeah, and plenty others. That office of yours was a close second to a railroad station. But, uh, what's this visit for? According to ballistics, the same gun killed Sorova, Belden, and Grady. Mind if I check yours? <laughs> You know I don't carry a gun. I haven't had one around here in years. Come on, search the place. You think if I had one, I would keep it here just to show? Looks like you're getting a little careless, Hardway. That gun matches those bullets. It'll be too bad for you. Get that to ballistics. So you still think I killed Sorova while I was in your office, eh? You could have farmed that rod out. Take him away. You're making a mistake, Street. Murder is not my racket. Maybe. We'll wait and see what that ballistic report says. All right, keep your hands right there. Turn around. Oh, Cap Anderson, huh? From Harry Lockett's fishing barge. So this is the seafood you supply this place with, huh? This is Mr. Wong, Bessie. I'll be experimenting with the phone for a little while, so pay no attention if it rings. Oh, come in, Forbes. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wong. Well, that is a relief. <laughs> I was wondering who was up here. Oh, you put that string down past my window. Yes. When I found the receiver off the stand last night, 
I had an idea that the switchboard operator was intended to overhear what she heard. I don't follow you. I believe that the murderer had a way of forcing her to listen at the right time. You think that a murderer would deliberately invite a witness to his crime? He might arrange to have her think she was a witness with a piece of cord, a telephone, and a radio. I don't understand. Now, this radio is a new remote control mark. Now, let us assume that a certain radio program exactly fitted a given situation. How easy it would be to tune in the desired station at the right time and be nowhere near the instrument. Oh, I see. You mean that the crime could have been committed some time before? Of course. And by any of our suspects who had such cast iron alibis. Hardway Harry Lockett, for instance, who planted himself in Street's office at the supposed time of the murder. Any of his friends. Even young Belden? Even young Belden. He was here at 10 o'clock. Who knows? Perhaps it was his second visit. You don't believe that, do you? No. Nor that any of the others did it, either. No. Is that what you were looking for, Mr. Wong? Yes. And you pulled the cord... When I went to get the drink. And when you reached for the cigars... I turned off the radio by remote control. Thank you, Mr. Forbes. Keep away from that telephone. Get over there. In. I'll see for you. Operator. Mr. Forbes doesn't answer. All right, thanks. Why don't you answer that call? Well, that's Mr. Wong. He told me not to pay no attention to it. Mr. Wong? Yeah, he's up in Mr. Rover's apartment playing with the telephone. Well, I hope he's having a good time. I'll drop up and see him. Playing with a telephone. <laughs> Killed Grady because he was in the way, and Belden because he was getting ready to talk. Griswold when he recognized his own program, and Tanya Sorova because she knew too much. No, because she was leaving me for a younger man. It's you who knows too much. Wong, Mr. Street. Just a moment, Street. What are you doing up here? Get him up. Over there with him. Well, the two of you. That makes it perfect. I suppose you'd like to have us turn around so you could give it to us in the back like you gave it to Grady. Drop that gun. Drop it, I say. Nice work, kid. Oh. Take him, Wong. Oh, Bobby. Bobby. Honey. Bobby. Yes? Oh, it's all right, Bessie. The experiment's over. You might get me the Herald, will you? Herald? You have a star reporter on your staff, a Miss Roberta Logan. She has just been instrumental in the capture of John Forbes, confessed murderer in the Dan Grady Sorova case. Oh, yes, this is a scoop. 